Welcome everyone to Catholic Sunday Scriptures in Context. Today we are celebrating the sixth Sunday of Easter, May 21st and 22nd. And for we Augustinians, May 22nd is the feast of St. Rita of Cascia. And so all those who uh, are devoted to St. Rita, we wish and pray for you that you may receive her graces and peace. Our first reading today is from Act chapter 15 of the Acts of the Apostles. And it's about one of the most important events in the early church, the Council of Jerusalem. So the passage that we have for today's scriptures, some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. So what happened at the council is now all the missing verses that you don't have in the reading. And now we have the conclusion of the meeting. The apostles and elders in agreement with the whole church decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have, with one accord, decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. So the Council of Jerusalem basically answers the question, do you need to be Jewish in order to be Christian? Again, as I mentioned, there are many verses missing here about the interaction between the apostles at this uh, council meeting. Eventually, what to be Jewish meant that you had to follow the Mosaic law, if you were a man, you had to be circumcised, and that you followed the dietary laws of the Jewish people and that you didn't eat certain foods and you ate certain things at certain times of the year. So the central authority of Jerusalem is strengthened by this meeting. It's the way they decided to resolve the issue and it shows that the apostles and the leadership of the church was not only in a spiritual sense, but also in an administrative sense. So the three requirements that we saw at the end of the letter are really from Leviticus chapter 17 and 18. And these were the requirements for non-Jews living among Jewish people if they wanted to they had to abide by those three things. So what they decided is the only criterion for uh, that necessitated being a Christian was faith in Jesus. You did not have to be circumcised in order to be a Christian. And so the language of that decree, as the parts that I highlighted there, show that they wrote it in the format of an official document, much like the Romans would have used. Our second reading is from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, and it's about the heavenly Jerusalem. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain, showed me the holy city Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stone as its foundation on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. So this heavenly Jerusalem, and we must remember when this passage was written, 
that the city of Jerusalem had been destroyed by the Romans and the Jewish people were so focused that if they didn't have a temple in Jerusalem, how could they worship? How could they sacrifice? And so this vision explains that you don't need the temple anymore because God has replaced it. The vision here is similar to the visions of the prophet Ezekiel in chapters 40 and 48. And the whole city has God's presence now, not just the temple, as was the case in the old Jerusalem. And the architecture illustrates the continuity between the Jews of old with the names of the 12 tribes and Christianity with the names of the 12 apostles. And now, according to the vision, all prophecies are fulfilled and no temple is needed because God and humanity encounter each other in Jesus. And that was the purpose of the temple where humans would meet God in the Holy of Holies. And so God's presence is the light of the city. Our gospel comes from the 14th chapter of John, and it's about the sending of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever loves me will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. So this passage is prompted by a question that Jude, not Judas, but the Apostle Jude, the patron saint of the impossible, asks, why do you reveal yourself to us and not the world? And Jesus explains the circle of love, that God loved Jesus, Jesus loved the disciples, and it is upon them to be the witnesses that uh, talk about this love to the world. So belief in Jesus is not a matter of the mind, but of the soul, that you need to have faith, and that's why it involves love. Without love, you cannot believe. So he gives them peace, shalom, and shalom in Hebrew is really a state of harmony and communion with God. That's what peace means. It's not the absence of war. It's this harmony with God. And the spirit, the word that uh, John uses is paraclete, which means advocate. Uh, it also means to draw near, um, to call near from the Greek, will strengthen this relationship. Um, and Jesus was sent by the Father. He speaks the words of the Father and will return to the Father. And this return is not a time of sadness or loss, but a time of exaltation and glorification that Jesus, who was fully human, has now become fully God by ascending to heaven. And so all that he said and did now has deeper meaning because he is one with God. And the Spirit is sent to teach and remind all believers of the words of Jesus. And the peace that Jesus gives is about salvation. And that's why this peace is so different. Again, pray for peace, for peace for Ukraine, and pray for all the refugees. And thank you for listening to this. And if you think it would be helpful, please recommend it to others. Thank you very much.